New York Sun, May 10th, 1930. Texas mob runs amok, burns blocks of Negro homes. Sherman, Texas, May 10th. As an aftermath to the burning of the Sherman courthouse here yesterday, in which George Hughes, alleged Negro rapist, was killed, three blocks of Negro dwellings were burned by a raging mob here early this morning. The mob, after seizing Hughes's body from the ruins of the courthouse, chained it to the rear of an automobile and started for the Negro section. Through the streets, the mob dragged the body and the journey ended at the large Negro store which housed a drugstore, beauty shop, undertaker, tailor, and other enterprises. A tree was nearby. The body was strung up to the tree and boxes piled beneath. A fire was light, uh, lit. Then the drugstore was set on fire. After virtually destroying the drugstore, the mob surged down a three-block section of ne the Negro district. A stampede of humanity ran amok. Clubs, bricks, bottles, and fists were wielded against the windows and doors. Virtually every store was entered, and its interior looted and wrecked. Near 2 a.m., most of the mob dispersed, and harassed officials believed to be, uh, that most of their grief was over. Just then, a fresh fire broke out and the overtaxed fire department went clanging again into the Negro district. About 700 white person and knots of 20 and 50 each were on the streets at that hour. Every Negro had dispersed from the Negro section, even from districts which were not burning. The frightened men, women, and children were reported to be hundling and brush thickets on the outskirts of Sherman. Later this morning, hundreds of curious persons invaded Sherman, Highways were covered by solid strings of automobile, bringing visitors to the city, which because of the numerous colleges, churches, and five fine public buildings is known, to, uh, known as the Athens of Texas. Have you been recompensed for this? Have you been paid back for this? Why are you called looting, looters and vandals? Why are you mocked and told that you shouldn't be looting towns because of what's been happening to you or what happens to you when these people... So many stories in this book. They've looted your buildings. They've burned your towns down, all under the allegation of one Caucasian woman. And it's not even proven. It's just an allegation. This was happening so much, but all they do is talk about the you know what that happened over there during World War II and all those six million people that were destroyed when over six million people at the same time were being destroyed over here. They don't want to talk about that. Recompense is coming. Spiritual recompense is coming. And spiritually, they're paying for what they've done. They tell you, I didn't own any slaves. I didn't do this to you. I don't have to pay for that. My conscience is clear. No. If you're a good Christian nation, as you believe you are, you say you are, which we know you're not, um, you should know that the generations after pay for the crimes of their forefathers. It happened to... The children of Israel is going to happen to you too. You can't say, I didn't do this. If your forefathers did this, you're going to pay for it somewhere down the line. That's why it's called spiritual recompense. That's why it hurts so much more when it happens. Because they know specifically this may not come back to haunt them in this de uh, generation, this decade, this year, that year, that day, the day after. But it's going to come back and it's going to affect somewhere down the line one of your ancestors and they're going to have to pay for it. It's true.